Hello interviewers, welcome to my channel Science and Technology. In today's show, Rocket Monday, we're going to talk about SLS debacle that is going on right now. Now, I hope, I wish, I pray that by the time you're watching this video, because I shoot videos in advance, this video is already outdated. Uh, because you have to understand, Artemis 1 should have happened on Monday 29 August 2022, but that was scrubbed due to issues. Now, you may be watching after a success one because they did figure out that uh, there were some minor issues which should be fixable, quote unquote, because if they have to roll back this puppy into the building, that then it will take October. Uh, but if they do not have to roll back, if they can fix it on pad, uh, then there is a good chance that by the time you are watching this video, there could be attempt number two or three. So I hope you are watching this after a successful landing and this was a successful scenario. Let's hope for that. Now, assuming that did not happen, let's dive deep into it. So why the heck the first launch was quote-unquote scrapped? Well, uh, there was issues in the green run. Be mindful, when green run was done, first one was cancelled. Second one was like, there was like, uh, something, something's off. Something is, something is like, okay. So there were some issues. Now, you, here's the deal. Why the heck they did not did uh, green run number three? Well, reality is this, these rockets are not reusable rockets, meaning they inherently do not have the oomph uh, in the chassis, in the structure to like go through multiple, uh, you know, fueling process again and again. Like uh, Falcon 9 can do that again and again because A, one of its propellant is very lightweight, for example, kerosene. Even supercooled uh, kerosene is not that cold. Liquid oxygen, cold, not that cold. This has liquid hydrogen, meaning the temperature stress that it has to deal with, it's much more brutal, meaning it cannot be fueled again and again, again and again. It will literally self-destruct because of the thermal stress. So there was a limit how many times and not to mention the solid boosters, they have been stacked for very, very, very long time. Meaning at this point, even the company that built this is like, I, I don't want to want this to fly because again, the binders, uh, it's not ICBM kind of binder. It's not designed for like, you know, build it and forget it. These are like, you know, build it, launch it. Now again, there is a window that is like, you know, few months, few years, then you start like a few decades. It's not, that's not the case. Like this is supposed to be launched by now. So there was a logical uh, assumption where it's like we do not want to stress the rocket as much as possible we have to launch it because you do not want this rocket to be so stressed so fatigued that by the time it goes through max q it's like poof. so they had to do it that was a logical call and not to mention if imagine this way let's say this did the green number uh, green run number three everything works out people are like good why didn't you launch it so it was something that was logical However, you have to understand that uh, there was a hydrogen leak, which if you are familiar with green runs, that also happened. Again, they managed to solve it with flow and pressure because they were like, you know, let's uh, flow it, temperature comes down, then the seal happens properly, which is very odd given the fact that this was the issue you detected, why the heck you did not fix it? So it's it's one of the, then they're saying like hydrogen and hydrogen is like, really? Like, really? So that's there. Now, why the heck it was scrubbed? If again, it was an issue, they fixed it, then why the heck it was scrubbed? There was one engine failed. Uh, now, four of these engines, uh, they are amazing engine, not to mention, these engines actually went to space. They are active space shuttle engines, meaning they were used. So we know for a fact that these engines are A, working condition, B, actually is flight proven. So they have to spool up uh, to get to cryo temperatures and then you start the ignition chamber. Now they flood it with hydrogen. Now they opened it, three engines, good. Fourth engine is like, yeah, I don't feel like it. Now they freaked out, it's like, why the hell that's happening? Now again, early assumption was there was a vault, uh, valve failure, valve was stuck. Uh, or then the assumption is right now is that there is a temperature failure uh, because it did not make sense. Like, you know, if you are increasing the pressure and nothing is happening, uh, sensor is not showing the temperature drop, where the heck hydrogen is going? So after current transfer, meaning by the time I'm making this video, the analysis suggests that maybe a temperature sensor failure rather than other system or maybe both of them failure. Now, be mindful, if temperature sensor is the culprit, they have to take this uh, thing back into the service system, or they could uh, reprogram the circuit in such a way that it's like overlook, uh, you know, overrule that sensor and we'll give the clear sign. They could uh, observe it from remote cameras and be like, you know, we think there is some condensation, they will figure it out. I think it's cold enough, just YOLO it. So that could be another option. So that's why it was scrapped or scrubbed. So let's understand the history. Now be mindful, Obama kind of saw it in 2011, like, wait a minute, yeah, that's how long ago he saw it. And he tried to cancel the Constellation project. Now Constellation project was something that uh, showed the symptoms. If you try to take some old project and try to rework that old hardware into a new project, you will always have garbage output. So Constellation showed that. Now Obama canceled it as a logical individual, it's tech dude, you're supposed to deliver this by now, you failed. You're supposed to deliver in this cost, you failed. Everything you're supposed to do, you failed. So let's cancel the project. You are not able to do it, let's cancel it. Now he did that. And his logic was that let commercial enterprise, meaning ULA, 
SpaceX. Uh, Boeing was also uh, completing its own rocket. At that point, people thought like Boeing will figure it out. So they were like, let commercial enterprise take care of that uh, annoying thing. And you deal with non-commercial aspects of it, meaning building, uh, training astronauts, building space station, like basically doing things after the rocket. Uh, you focus on that part optimize that part then uh, like you know let the rocket part be taken care of private enterprises now congress did not like it now this is a kind of a good thing because that's the whole thing you want you don't want to uh, you know uh, or put in syndrome so to say you do want checks and balances and congress was not happy with the decision of cancelling constellation project because constellation project was literally a rotten project from space shuttle because space shuttle when it was cancelled it literally had too many jobs attached to it too many goddamn jobs attached to it and not only the primary jobs the secondary jobs it created a like a whole job market where people like dude we have to have this sort of this many job loss like it could poof villages out of map that how many uh, that's the number of jobs it was like taking away with it so congress was like nah we have to have something like this so both of them came to compromise and the compromise created a new garbage known as uh, senate launch system or sometimes also called space launch system which was even more stupid with even more flaws because here's the orion project is a successful side of constellation now here's the how the heck orion became successful when you're supposed to reuse engines when you're supposed to reuse solid boosters why the heck those things are taking time but this came free that's the time when obama realized like making a brand new thing was like okay here's your money do a new thing these are the spec sheet that you have to meet how you do it go yolo on it it works like engineers like that engineers like clean set because again their mind actually know everything in the past they don't have to carry forward the old hardware they're like dude we can make it better you know mark one is garbage mark two is less garbage mark three is even less garbage even iron man kind of figured it out so the, he figured it out it's like making a fresh system is always better and that's what he was trying to do that's why the orion is the only thing from constellation that people know because it worked and in SLS, everything is reworked. Everything. This is now reworked from uh, SLS. Now, be mindful, this actually went to space and nothing else after that. So, fresh uh, project always works, but recommissioning always wastes money. And unfortunately, SLS is just too much rework, too much garbage, too much wastage. So, history is not good, like flat out. And be mindful, that is 2011. So, we had like long enough time to cancel this project. We failed to do so. Let's come to the legal sides of things. Uh, NASA has an office of Inspector General. Now, these sort of people are generally called upon or again, they can act on their own accord if they notice something off. And if sometimes Congress is like, dude, we are giving NASA money. Where the heck, why the heck would the telescope that's supposed to be made in 500 million, which was now scaled to 1.4 billion, is costing $10 billion? What the hell is happening? So the office of Inspector General are the people who are supposed to take care of the situation. It's like, why is that happening? Is it a valid reason? Is it corruption? What is happening? So they flat out want time and time again uh, that they just lost it. They're like, you, bro, you, you gone, you gone. You cannot do this. This is fundamentally not how you run a project. And they were the first one to flat out scream. It's like, dude, 2024 launch that that you are selling to the public. It's not something that you can do. Flat out, flat out. It's like, no, no. How the heck you even allowed a president to even say that 2024 is a target time? It's like, dude, that's not something that can be done. And then um, Artemis is a failed project simply because the, what you're seeing, Artemis 1, is a Block 1 product. And Block 1 product is, again, a garbage product because it is literally taking upper stage of some other rocket. It's like, why? They, like, that's the whole problem. Every time they try to, you know, save money by re reusing something, they end up wasting money. And that created another consequence that when they want to launch Lunar Gateway, they need a bigger, beefier rocket. Bigger, beefier rocket than SLS? Yes. SLS core will remain the same. The upper stage would be changed. Again, fresh, uh, fresh slate would have solved this problem, but they did not. Now, block one cannot be used at this point in time. Why? The launch tower is behind schedule. Not the rocket, the launch tower. Let that sing. And not to mention where this launch tower came from, this came from Constellation. Now, the biggest problem with this launch tower, it's causing too much difficulty, wasting too much money. Why? It was a scrap over of a Constellation project. Now you see the paradox. It's like everything. It's if It would have been far more better for NASA to just like take the things, poof it into dumpster, and then start fresh. They would have saved so much money. So much money. So, and flat out. Uh, this report came out like NASA's management of the mobile launch tower 2 contract June 9, 2022 uh, flat out. It's like bro, one ML1 can only be used for one manned mission and after every mission after that is planned for using ML2. That is using uh, block 1B and block 2. Now here's the problem. ML2 is nowhere to be found. It's supposed to be almost ready at this point in time, but it's way behind schedule. Budget just went lol. So realistically speaking, 
flat out it's not going to happen it creates a worst case scenario where you can have a human mission because of the half working uh, launch tower that we have you can have a block one with a proper mission onto the moon took you come back when is the second mission yeah that's could be three to six years late that's the whole problem because of the ml2 and flat out uh, Inspector General is like, dude, this this cannot go on. Like <laughs> the statement they have used, this is like official document. I'm not saying this, the official document they have is like, dude, what the hell? And not to mention there are some people saying that there may be a chance of corruption because the Brechtel uh, company that is building this thing, uh, they flat out are not meeting any criteria and they're supposed to be rejected the moment they are not meeting criteria. They're supposed to be like, dude, you're not showing a proper uh, project analysis, poof. You are out of contract. That did not happen. You are failing to meet uh, deadlines that we have established with you. It's like it's not just like NASA says this. No, it's like NASA and Bechtel work together. And they're like, you know, you will have this delivered in this time. You have this delivered in this time. You are failing to deliver all of it. And then NASA is giving you money, like actual bonus. What the hell? At this point, people want there to be corruption charges. People want there to be corruption because like it does not make sense. Like literally, Office of um, Inspector General is like, bro, can you just go to fixed co price contract? Just just go to fixed price contract. Just go. Uh, but that's the whole thing. Everything in this whole project, SLS, is just messed up beyond repair. And think of it this way. Like, how do you sell it to Congress? It's like, yeah, the rocket that we supposed to be cheaper because we are reusing parts is now uh, almost $2 billion per launch. And the launch tower itself is multi-billion dollar. Try to sell it to the public. Try to sell it to Congress. So that flat out... Inspector General is like, dude, this project will cancel itself. Like, it has to cancel itself sooner or later. Now, again, how many missions you try to extract out of it, that's up to you. But it has to be. And be mindful, umbilical location change in block 2 and 1B. So, you have to physically change this hardware. You cannot just like, let's jerry-rig it together. It can't work. So, what we can expect in the future? Well, the reality is this may be the best failed rocket ever. What does that mean? That simply means uh, this will force NASA to stop building rockets. It's like, dude, you cannot build rockets. Just stop. Just stop. You do not know how to run companies. Just stop. And all uh, rockets will be privately funded and built, be it ULA, be it SpaceX, be it Rocket Labs, be it whatever else. It, all the rockets will be privately built and it will be funded by NASA in terms of services. Like, hey, I want this rocket. It's like, okay, here's the money, here's the done, go home, sweet dreams, nothing else. All the developments, uh, growth, everything will be done privately and NASA will only pay for service at that point in time. And NASA will, after that, will only focus on undeveloped area, meaning how to build rovers, how to build oxygen generator for Mars, those sort of area where it's not financially viable. So that will allow NASA to have a lot of money saved. It will allow them to work much more efficiently, much more fast. It will improve competition because, again, if there are two, three contractors working, uh, you know, against each other, most likely the, one of them will deliver. If you have all of the contractors, let's say you have Lockheed Martin, you have, uh, uh, let's say, Boeing, you have ULA, like God knows how many other companies you have working in one project known as SLS, none of them are going to work. They're like, oh, who cares, you know, we can just keep increasing our budget. So... Fundamentally, fixed price contract have to become a thing and everything they are developing with uh, with someone, let's say sp with SpaceX, they are developing the lunar system, they have to have like deadlines. Now, be mindful, SpaceX is really good with that and their uh, transparency is really good. And uh, again, cost overrun is there, uh, delay is there, but compared to everything else, be mindful, Boeing is on the other side, which is like, yeah, we are behind schedule to so much that it's like, what's the point of it anymore? So, uh, I'm like, we might be cancelling the <laughs> Boeing uh, spacecraft. So. Realistically speaking, this will allow other companies to actually have a shot into becoming successful, like Rocket Lab developing their Neutron rocket. That could become the, let's say, next satellite launcher vehicle. Rather than Falcon 9, we're like, you know what? Neutron is far more cost effective. Let's look into that. And then SpaceX would be like, you know, if you want to launch big heavy things, I'm your guy. So this will be a really good uh, development path. And not to mention, because it will be done by Congress, there won't be a job, whatever the jobs. It's like, that would be awesome. Uh, it's like a painful way to learn things, but... Somebody's got to do it. And not to mention, um, it's a good thing that there are limits. There are checks and balances. Again, sometimes bureaucracy does create garbage. But i rather have bureaucracy than have Putin. So that's why um, I'm happy with this. But again, painful, but I have to do it. And that's why in engineering, clean slate is desirable. Because you still know everything that you uh, learned from the Mark 1 mistakes. You don't need to carry forward the mistakes of Mark 1. You're just like, okay, Mark 1. I learned everything I need to learn. Build Mark 2. Learn from Iron Man. So this was my presentation on SLS debacle. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike. Press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.